Welcome back. We've laid out the schematic and we're ready to start assigning footprints to these schematic symbols. This is where we capture a lot of design intent because it will set the parts that we can use for our project. We'll be using a mixture of surface mount and through hole parts. Through hole parts are all the kinds of parts that you can put into a breadboard. Parts that have pins that go through a circuit board. We're going to use through hole parts for everything that's in the signal generator side of things so that we can take this design from the breadboard and just put it straight into our PCB. This power and input regulation side of things will use surface mount parts. True to their name, surface mount parts do not penetrate the PCB, they just sit on the surface of one side. This is great for miniaturizing circuit boards and for keeping the two sides of the circuit board separated. And indeed for a lot of modern parts, they're only available as a surface mount part. Now when you're assigning footprints, it always helps to have the physical part available so you can reference when you're assigning that footprint. If you don't already have the part or it's on the way in the post, you'll just have to choose your footprint by referencing the parts data sheet and be really, really careful here to make sure you get all the details exactly right. Start assigning footprints by running the footprint assignment tool. This will open a table that shows every part that's in the schematic in this uh, center column. On the left, we have the footprint libraries and on the right, we have the footprints that are in that library. It's kind of funny how it's split like this, but you get used to it really quickly. For example, we can see that we already have two footprints assigned. We have the LM555N that's assigned to a dip package. And that was something that we chose when we were placing the schematic symbol. Likewise, the AMS1117 already comes in a SOT223 package. I've split my screen because when I click on these footprint assignment rows, the schematic will jump to that schematic symbol, which is really helpful for not getting confused. So we can see we have C1 and C2 at the top, and I'm gonna use the same footprint capacitor for those. It's just a little ceramic disc capacitor or monolithic capacitor. So I can hold down shift or control and select both of those rows. Now in the left column, I can find capacitor THT for through hole technology. It's not axial, it's going to be disc. I want a disc capacitor. So I can just filter by typing disc and make sure you have the appropriate filter option checked here. So I'm assigning the little ceramic disc or monolithic capacitor footprints for these two capacitors. And one of the inescapable things with electronics and PCB design is that there's a heavy mixture of metric and imperial units. Each of these breadboard holes is 0.1 inch apart, which is 2.54 millimeters. Uh, capacitors are specced as a metric footprint. So even though, yes, it does fit between the rows, it's very slightly different. It's 2.5 millimeters for these parts. Not that it matters, the leads bend quite readily. But when I go to my filtered list, I'm gonna find the appropriate 2.5 millimeter unit. And my disc capacitor has a diameter of about four millimeters. So I'll select that 3.8. That looks pretty good. Maybe I'll just go to the 4.3. You can right click and select view footprint and you'll see that as I jump between those two rows, the only real thing that changes is the size of that silk artwork. The pins are staying the same distance apart. So it's just like the, the overall footprint. I'll play it safe and I'll select the 3.8. And by double clicking that, it's applied that footprint to both of the rows that I had selected. Sticking to parts that are just through hole for now, I'll skip to my diode, the 1N4148, which is a small signal glass diode. This is in a DO35 package. If you don't know what that means, it's just one of those patterns that you'll grow to recognize as you do more of this. So I can select the diode, find the diodes library, diode through hole technology. I'll remove my filter. If you see this empty list, just remember that you probably still have a filter applied and I know that it's a DO35. And here we have a bunch of options for what is the same package. So it's worth uh, inspecting these variants. You can see some of them are placed vertically, right click view selected footprint. Some of them are placed vertically so that it occupies the smallest amount of space. And there are two variants, there's anode up and cathode up. I like to, I don't really like to use these, I don't really like through hole components to be like standing tall and flapping in the breeze. So I'll go straight to the horizontal ones and there are three options. And the only thing that changes 
is the pitch, the distance between those pins. I'm going to go for 7.62 millimeters. It's the smallest one and it also kind of works the neatest. So I'll select that footprint. It's also worth noting when you're inspecting this viewer, you can click into the viewer and hold Alt and then press three and you'll view the 3D model for this. But this is a great way to inspect the part as well. It can give you a bit more information before you commit to selecting that footprint. You can use Alt 3 for that 3D viewer or press the show 3D viewer window up here. And continuing on, we have our one meg resistor and the 22K resistor. I know they're both gonna be through hole parts, so I'll hold shift or control, select both of them, find resistor THT, resistor through hole, and now we have a bunch of options. We have power resistors, we have DIN footprint resistors, we have resistor arrays. It's all getting a little bit overwhelming, but what we can work with is that pitch. Rather than get like kind of overwhelmed by the abundance of choice, I'll just filter by 7.62 millimeters. I know I want a horizontal resistor. And now we're down to basic, like, you know, smaller, less important variants, like the diameter of the resistor. But really, there's only two here that I want because these are the, the horizontal ones. So I can view those. And if I click between them, yeah, it's really just the size of that bounding box, that silk screen artwork. I'm using pretty small resistors, so I'll just select this smaller one. You could bust out the calipers and, and dial it in if you like. I'm pretty confident this is the one. Now I've breadboarded this circuit with a 100K linear potentiometer that is one of these like crusty old basic looking ones. I don't think I wanna use this for the final design. I wanna use something more like what's on screen, this uh, Burns incorporated potentiometer that's going to mount vertically into the circuit board. Now I don't have this part with me right now, but what I do have is the family name of the part and KiCad is preloaded with loads and loads of very useful component families. So if we search for this part in KiCad when we're assigning the potentiometer footprint, we should get a gratifying result. I'll find the potentiometer through hole. And there are, there are a lot, but if we start breaking it down, we've got potentiometer through hole, and then we start having these potentiometer families, ACP, alpha, and here's Burns or Borns. But if we paste in that family name, we have two results. So even though we have a part that, we're, that we don't actually physically have and we can't inspect it, we can find it very readily with the family name. The only differences are, so here is a single gang potentiometer. It only has three pins. And here's a, a single horizontal variant. So that's it. We're, we're pretty much done. We, we, we know exactly the one we want. It's PTV09A-1. If I return to this page, that's exactly what we have here. Well, not quite. We have a PT09A-4 series. But if we open up that data sheet, we can see that the only difference is the presence of a bushing. So we've got the PT09A-1, which is exactly what we have in KiCad. And note that we have this bushing feature in the drawing. But if we come down to the 09A-4, it's exactly the same. It's just bushingless and that feature is missing from the shaft. No big deal. It's not going through an enclosure, etc., etc. It's the footprint that we care about. And so this part will be just fine. So I can select RV1 and make sure I've got the right part. That looks good. Double click that and apply. It's time for the servo header find J1 for a server, or yours might have a different uh, J number. And we'll find now connector pin header. And I'm gonna select connector pin header 2.54. And again, the variance, we have the number of rows, the pins per row, the pitch, very important, and the horizontal or vertical orientation. I know that I want a one by 03, and that narrows it down to just three variants. And I'm, I know that I'm going to want a vertical. That's what this looks like. For, for reference, horizontal would be if the pins were bent and that connector would slide on horizontally. The vertical pins though are super, super common. So I'll go with that. We need screw terminals. Uh, J2, where are you? J2 is going to be a 
Oh, we're there already. J2 is going to be a connector terminal block. Terminal block is cool. I know that Phoenix make a lot of terminal blocks and that is commonly a five millimeter pitch terminal block. So I'll find a 5.00 millimeter and there are a lot, but a one by two, let's have a look at that. That is looking pretty good. Now, if I don't nail the exact outline, it's not a big deal. So I'll apply that. So we've got these two LEDs. One is to indicate the presence of 12 volts and one is to indicate the presence of five volts. These are basically like useful debugging tools. So let's find D3, uh, no, not D3, D4. We'll find that and we'll quickly make that a LED with through hole. Well, I know that it's a five millimeter LED, so D5. That is gonna be exactly what we want. It doesn't even take into account the pitch. LEDs, for some reason, at least the, the really early basic uh, model LEDs, always seem to be defined just by that, their diameter. So we'll use that, and we'll jump on this resistor as well. And what we can do here is we can copy one of these. So I can just highlight the row of one of the other resistors that I've already chosen, and I can copy that, and I ought to be able to paste that. There you go. Now R4 has a footprint. And that completes all the component, uh, all the footprint assignments for the through hole part of the circuit. Now we're getting on to the surface mount parts. Let's work on the diode next. That is this guy. And we're going to find the diodes library. We're just, you know, rinsing and repeat. Follow your nose. Diode SMD. I acquired this part so I know that it is known as an SMA part. I'll search that, SMA, and we've got a couple of options. We've got diode SMA as if it's being placed by a machine. We also have a hand soldering option, which if you look at the difference, man, that hand soldering option flares the pads out so you can get in there with a soldering iron. That's pretty cute. Um, it certainly won't hurt at this stage to go for something that's a little easier. So I'm going to go for this one because I kind of like the look of it better. But as long as it's a DSMA, I'm happy. Now, a common way to describe the surface mount parts that are capacitors, resistors, and LEDs is using a four-digit part code. And that is linked to the imperial dimensions of that footprint. I'll show you what I mean. Uh, let's start with R3 instead. We want a resistor surface mount device. I'm going to pick a really easy to work with size. The, one of the biggest surface mount parts that you can get is 1206 and this refers to the dimensions uh, the imperial dimensions of the part the width and the height in like fractions of an inch that also translates to 3216 in metric you almost never at least in my experience you almost never hear parts being referred to by their metric part code it's just too embedded in the industry to be referring to it by 1206 of course there will be exceptions but that's just my experience so I'm going to pick 1206, this nice, big, friendly resistor for R3. And now when we specify D3, the LED, when I go to LEDs, SMD, you can see my filter is still applied. There are 1206 LEDs out there. More likely, though, you'll be working with a something smaller. So let's try something a little bit smaller for this, 0805. And we can view that. So there's the, there's the same thing. You lose a lot of perspective on size when you're working with CAD. It's very easy to infinitely zoom. This is a little bit smaller than 1206 and it has a hand soldering footprint. So why not choose that? Let's make life easier for ourselves. And finally, capacitor C3, we find the capacitor library and I'm gonna use an 0805 part for this as well. So we can select that hand solder footprint, check it out. Looks pretty nice. Just pick the hand solder one, that'll be fine. And just like that, we're done. We've finished our entire to-do list of parts. So we can click okay on that. If you wanna capture your progress, you should definitely apply to schematic and save as you go. It's quite risky having that menu open for so long without saving it. But there you have it. We have assigned all the footprints for all our parts. So this has been a long video because it's worth taking your time with this and I wanted to show you each of the, at least some of the nuance that goes into selecting parts, just the 
the wild number of like device variants and families that are out there. To give you some context to all the parts that we've just selected, I'm going to import them into the, the PCB editing view. So go up to this green button up here, open PCB in board editor. And this is the last thing that we'll do in this video. We'll just click that button. It'll open up the PCB editor, which looks like this. And we're just gonna dump all the parts in by clicking this update PCB with changes made to schematic. Click that, I'm going to just click update PCB. And that's gonna dump all the parts in a big group. And we're doing this so that we can compare what things look like. So if I just click and then zoom in, we can see here we have our triple five timer and here we have our surface mount regulator. And you know, they're not that different in size, but this is a big power part. There's our potentiometer and our terminal block, but the really, really salient difference comes when you're comparing one of the resistors that's a through hole part with one of the other resistors and look at that. That's quite interesting. So this resistor is, a, the surface mount resistor is about the same physical size as the body of the through hole resistor. It just doesn't have the leads. And remember, I said this was a big part. It is, as far as surface mount parts goes, this is, this is getting up there. It's just really easy to work with uh, if you're a beginner. Likewise, the LEDs are that 0805 footprint. And so they're a little bit smaller again. If I go into the 3D view with Alt 3, we can see some more, uh, you know, some more intuitive differences. And so that's what those two resistors look like. Through hole, 1206 and 0805 on the LED. And so you can see things start to get pretty small. Even 0805 is not all that small by uh, surface mount part standards.